every case we take, whether it's a dog, a cat, or a parrot, goes the same way. What we look at may be different. What we recommend may be different. But the way we do the case is always the same. The first thing we do is take a history, a very detailed history. Where did you get the animal? At what age? You know, do you have vet records on the animal? Uh, what kind of training has gone on? What kind of socialization has gone on? Um, often, um, we'll ask the owner to show us. So the evaluation process we go through is we have history forms and questions and diagnostic flowcharts. Um, for example, separation anxiety can present in so many different ways that I actually have a flow chart that I take myself through um, to see how that dog's separation anxiety is presenting. Um, and it's, I cannot overstate how important observations are. It's all about having an experienced eye, being able to study and truly, you know, observe um, and understand what you're seeing. So body language, vocalizations, um, interaction with the environment. This one is big and sometimes funny. You'll say, well, what's the cat doing? You know, what is the dog doing over there? Um, so the way they interact with the environment gives us a lot of clues as to what's going on. And they'd owned them about two years and they called me because what the owner had been doing is when guests would come to her home, she would say, um, turn away and don't look at him. Just ignore him. Well, the dog started to um, muzzle punch people on the hip. So a muzzle punch, you know, the dog opens their mouth and they hit you, but they don't bite down. Um, and I came in and sure enough, there was the dog right at me, the social pressure's building, right? The dog's looking for any sign, and I'm just like, la, la, la. Came in, sat down. And I said to the owner, so that's what you do every time someone comes over to your house? You just let the dog go to the front door? And you know adult human beings don't follow instructions. Okay, operant quadrants. This is totally misunderstood. Um, Here's the main takeaway from this slide. <coughs> Behavior modification and training is an exercise in statistical analysis. Am I getting more of a behavior or less of a behavior? That's what it's all about, right? If that chart, if I bounce a meatball off that charging dog's head and I get less of that behavior, did I reinforce the charging behavior? Did I reinforce the fear aggression? No, because I got less of it. The scientific definition of reinforcement is that whatever you're doing, the st statistical likelihood that you'll get that behavior again increases. That's all it means. Punishment just means that whatever you're doing, you're likely to get less of that behavior statistically. And all, adding, all positive means is you're adding something. And negative means you're subtracting. So when I'm working with a lot of fearful dogs, yeah, I'm using positive reinforcement. I'm, cl I'm having the owner click or I'm clicking because I need the dog or the cat. I do this a lot with human-directed aggression in cats and with cat, cat aggression. The reason I click is because, not because clickers are magic. I click because I'm trying to tell the cat that's what's predicting the tuna. That's what's predicting the meatball. Not that, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that. It's that thing. So we're marking. It's our scalpel as a way of working our way through the, all of the stimuli. You know, Pavlov had a lab. We don't. We're out in the messy, messy world, right, trying to fix it. Okay. We do anywhere from a 10 to 20 minute phone intake with every client who contacts us, whether it's via email, phone, or a contact us form. And there are many cases we won't see until we've referred them back to you. Um, some of the red flags was the behavior changed suddenly. I have two dogs, they've been living together 
just fine for seven years, and now all of a sudden they're fighting and doing damage. Talk about a red flag. Somebody's hurting. Something is going on there, and I want the dogs evaluated um, medically. Um, also, the age and breed of the animal. You know, oh, I've got an eight- or nine-year-old border collie, and all of a sudden, you know, something or other. I want that, you know, when was your last vet, vet visit? It's like a mantra with me. When was your last vet visit? When was your last vet visit?